Greetings. I am honored to present our work, Vital Role of 2D CNN in Brain Malignancy at the ICMISC conference. Our problem statement for this work is to help medical technicians and students understand and locate malignant growth of cells in the brain. Brain tumors are notoriously hard to detect and automating the process would help the patients with symptoms of trauma to and in the brain. To aid with this task, we aimed to detect malignant growth of brain cells with a CNN model working on, on flattened input of MRI images. The model detects whether an MRI image shows malignant cell growth in the brain or not. It returns positive if they are detected and negative if they are not detected in the image. The model aims to have good accuracy and detect with precision. The majority of existing systems work with conventional CNN models involving deep learning methods with a fully connected network, but do not perform any image pre-processing techniques on the input images. One such approach gives a mean accuracy of 96.08%, but it does not clean the data, which would have given better input for the model to learn from, and thus does not reach its full potential. In this approach, a small data set of generally 200 to 300 images is cleaned and pr processed prior to giving inputs to the model. The model is generally a CNN or SVM model. In this approach, the data set is too small for the model to fully learn without bias. Furthermore, a small data set could also miss malignant cell growth in odd locations, thus treating such tumors as outliers or even not considering them at all. Thus, being an inefficient model for any other data set there may be. The approach this work takes is using a 2D or flattened CNN model with 15 layers, including activation functions such as RELU, ELU, TANH, and sigmoid. The input data set with 3246 MRI images was collected from Kaggle. The data set was resized enhanced and augmented to train the model for various possible locations of malignant cell growth. For our approach, we took to reading many previous papers published majorly in 2020 to come to the conclusion that using a convolution neural network would be the best for this system, along with a large data set of pre-processed images. Given below is the complete system architecture. The flow is as shown in the diagram. We upload the data set first, then load the images using OpenCV. Pre-process and convert the images into arrays. And after that, we train the model, which has 15 layers with the use of activation functions. For the results, MRI images are uploaded to be classified. The model is, is assessed on the criteria, accuracy, precision, recall, and F-score. Our methodology is based on CNN and activation functions. Here is why we use CNN. Image scalability is impossible in a traditional neural network. However, a picture may be scaled in a convolution neural network. Input, convolution, rectified linear unit layer, pooling layer, and fully connected layer make up the network of the CNN. The addition of the activation functions ELU, TANH, and SIGMOID each have their significance. There are a total of 15 layers in the network. Now for the activation functions. Rectified linear unit. This linear function outputs zero if the input is negative or the number itself if it is positive. A model that implements it is quicker to train and generally produces higher performance. And thus it is used as a default in the CNN model. And now to the sigmoid activation function. The range of the sigmoid function is in between 0 and 1. This is represented by an S-shaped curve. It is used as the last step to categorize the input. Hyperbolic tangent function. The tan H or the hyperbolic tangent fun activation function resembles the sigmoid activation function in appearance and even has the same S-shaped curve. The function accepts any real value as input and returns a value between minus 1 and 1. The exponential linear unit function considers negative values which assist it to lower mean 
uh, unit activations towards zero. It is similar to what is done in batch normalization. The relation between all these activation functions lies in the fact that all of them are quick to be implemented and also have similar curves, but along with different ranges, allowing for, a more, for more preciseness. And now for the results. Since this was a classification task of whether a brain tumor is malignant or not based on MRI images, classical tools like accuracy, F-score, recall, and confusion, mat confusion matrix were used to evaluate the model's performance. This model achieved a training accuracy of 99.44% in just five epochs, while the training loss was 0.431%. There was no further change in value loss after the fifth epoch and thus the cycle was ended at five. Here we see the graphs that we got from evaluation during training and validation of the model. Here you see the training accuracy of the 2D model. The next you see training loss of the 2D model. And the last one is the accuracy comparison between the training versus the validation set. Here we can see the confusion matrix and the testing evaluation matrix table. Uh, from the confusion matrix, it is quite evident that we've got an validation set accuracy of 97% uh, with an approximate of 2.54 loss. Now the evaluation metrics are as such, the precision is at 98%, the recall at 99%, the F-score at 99%, and the error is at 0 0.0298. It can be concluded that the approach of creating a 2D CNN model with deep learning techniques applied on, the, on a large data set was successful, as it resulted in the procured accuracy of 99.44%. The model is well structured and gives coherent results. Furthermore, the work can be extended to a 3D CNN model for further analysis of the malignant cell growth or the tumor. This work can be further extended by classifying a relevant data set of brain MRI images into different medical classes such as glioma tumors, pituitary tumors, or even grade such as grade 2, grade 3, and grade 4. It can also be furthered by using 3D CNN to locate the malignant cell growth with more accuracy and find physical properties of the tumor such as its volume and depth. These are some of the reference papers that were read to understand the problem of detecting malignant cell growth in the brain. All of the six papers mentioned here were published in the year 2020. I would like to thank all the co-authors of the work for their contributions. Thank you all. We are now open for any queries.